Hello YouTube, welcome to video 7, Supplemental. This video is intended as instruction, or not instruction, as help for anybody else who is dismantling one of these things. This is going to be about the transfer case, um, disassembling the transfer case, because I found it was a little hard to get information on that. Of course there's a Haynes manual, but you don't do that, you watch YouTube, don't you? So I'm just making this for the purposes of those who are actually doing this, taking that transfer box apart to send it off to Ashcroft. Um, so it's long and talky and there's no time lapses and it's not exciting. So if you're just here for the entertainment and uh, watching these videos, then maybe give this one a miss. Uh, if you're thinking of taking one of these transfer cases apart, then this might be of help to you. Um, yeah, take it or leave it. This is not meant for the masses. This is an instructional video. I hope it's useful to you if you are going to watch. I'm trying to do these videos as a bit of an entertainment, a bit of a diary of what I've done, really. But, um, you know, if, if it is of any benefit, I found it very difficult to find information on stripping this transfer box down for the Ashcroft High, trans, high, what is it? Ashcroft high Ratio Transfer Box. So... Yeah, the, the issue being then that these Land Rovers, they don't do uh, high speeds. And if you're doing 60 or 70 miles per hour, the engine is, is really screaming away. I don't actually know this specific RPM, but by all accounts, it uses a lot of fuel and it's very noisy and not at all a pleasant experience. So you can do a load of things. You can change the differential ratios. You can get this, um, the ferry overdrive, ferry overdrive, I think it's called, which goes in the back of the gearbox. Um, or you can put this Ashcroft high ratio transfer box in, or even taller tyres is another thing. Uh, and as far as I can see, the, uh, the Ashcroft uh, transfer box is by far the best way to go. Their website states some really good reasons. No, no need to meddle with the, um, the speed ratio to the speedometer. That's all correct. Uh, it's nice and strong. Um, there's no extra parts. The ferry delta, the ferry delta, the ferry overdrive is not particularly uh, an especially strong unit. I think they're getting very rare and very hard to find now as well, and expensive. Um, uh, so yes, the diff obviously the ratios change the um, the ratios in low range as well. But the Ashcroft high ratio transfer box only changes high ratio, not low ratio. So it is a, a wicked transfer box. Uh, so it's a great thing to do, I think. And it's like 31% reduction in RPM. It's a huge change, and it changes all forward gears in high ratio. Yeah. So let me switch the camera around and show you what uh, I've been up to. That's better. So the yeah the gear box itself goes let me see oh it's all upside down and backward but yeah this is the top of the, let me turn the camera upside down this is the top of the gearbox and the bottom of the gearbox so the gearbox comes out here and the engine further forward okay so then this is the drive to the front wheels which comes out here and then again upside down this is the drive to the back wheels here and this is where you put the ferry overdrive or the PTO if that's the way you were going so you take this uh, cover off and a huge pan sort of a sump pan cover thing and you can access the bottom of this transfer box so here then is where the gearbox shaft that that gear there from the gearbox sits in there and that's easy enough to get off once you've got some other bits out of the way there are three bolts in here I don't know if you can see the recesses you can see through it there you go, three bolt holes uh, to unbolt and then the other ones are on the outside you can get to these ones externally you see but these ones are are internal so you, you just unbolt it and it comes off that's the gearbox side but there's a lot to come off to get to it so there's nothing particularly complicated about that really and the same for this end cover uh, on the inside where is it there you go on the inside it looks like that so it does have a support bearing in it there which supports the output shaft of the gearbox so that's great but that's nice and easy six bolts and that pops off and that's where you put your overdrive you see so that goes here easy no problem then this intermediate shaft this is the intermediate shaft okay so you've got gearbox intermediate shaft and then the outputs that holds the idler gears which are these so that transmits drive this meshes this meshes with the gear the gearbox output and it also meshes with this which is the output shaft to the front prop shaft and the back prop shaft so if you like that's an idler gear that's the gear that ashcroft are going to change uh, for a different ratio so they supply you, I think it's all three. You get a new gearbox output gear. You get, an, I think it's all three. It might be two. Uh, you get the whole idler assembly, This, but all of this lot. And you get a new one of those. Um, this is the low range. It's a straight cut. The uh, the high range for road use is helical for noise. Uh, so that stays the same, but but it is new, obviously, because it's one unit. And that that's different. So the, what they need to do now is you send this off to Ashcroft. And this hole here where the idler shaft uh, sits 
is remachined. I, th- I think it's sealed up or welded up or covered up or something, and they drill a new hole uh, in in a different location to uh, ac- what's the word to accommodate the different size gear. Okay, so dismantling the intermediate shaft was also very easy. There's that's the shaft, and there's a slot in it there. Can you see? There's a slot there. So there's just a bolt which holds a little pin. There it is, in fact. It's a, oh, sorry, it's a stud, not a bolt. A stud which holds a, a steel tab, and that meshes on the outside of the gearbox into that slot. And that's it. That's what holds this thing from turning, and it holds it from sliding out. And there's an O-ring which seals it. So there you go. That goes in there, and the stud goes in there. You just whip that out, pull it out, and the gear comes out. De- dead easy. There's no more to it than that, really. Um, the complication comes more on this end, the output shaft end. Because this gear here slides back and forth. There we go. Uh, on a selector, on a selector fork, like any other gear in a gearbox, you, you get the idea. There we go. Look. And that is what uh, changes between low ratio and high ratio. That selection is made, although it's happening here. This is the selector rod, which is doing the moving of that gear. Although it's happening here. Uh, you're selecting it at this end, so this rod transfers all the way through to here. So that rod pokes into, let me get this right here, the front end, pokes into there, goes right through the gearbox. So you have to dismantle the selector rod before you can take this whole assembly off the front of this assembly. And that is done by, you get your Whitworth spanner, which I haven't got, and you reach in through that hole there. Can you see there's a hole at the bottom there? Look, it's a, an access panel. So you can take the panel off, four little bolts, and you can access that. And from that point, I didn't need to take this off. This is the output, this would be the output flange, there it is, to the front prop shaft. You don't actually need to take that off anyone if you're about to do this work. All you've got to do is unbolt that selector, that selector fork from that rod. There's a there's a where is it? There you go, you can see there's a, a it's not a detent, but it looks like a detent. <laughs> um, a slot, yeah, where the bolt attaches, where the bolt sort of goes through. So you've got to take that off and then unbolt it. That's that's it then. It's nice and simple. So there's one, oh, there's um, some um, dowels as well. There's two dowels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts and two dowels. And it just slides off the front. But the issue I found when you're sliding that assembly off the front of here is it, uh, it catches on the bell housing of the gearbox. So actually you've got to get the transfer case and this assembly off the gearbox first and then there's enough room to pull this assembly off the front of the transfer box okay um to be honest i've never had a gearbox part in my life and i mean technically i still haven't because that's the gearbox but yeah i've always been a bit intimidated by it really but that that's it it's not it's not that bad <laughs> when you get into it you just got to keep in mind humans put this thing together it ain't that hard to take it apart so yeah that's that. So you can get the gearbox off, you can get the front of that off. Then for me, that's when it got a little bit more difficult. This assembly here has two, just like in, you know, a lot of things really, two opposing tapered needle roller bearings, one there and one there, right? Both of which are in good condition. These, this comes from this hole here. These are quite tight and knocked right in. This one's retained by a circlip on the outside. And this one is retained by a panel, like there it is, a, a casting, an aluminium casting. And this one has some shims in it. So I'm just going to keep those because they'll be the same. I'll need the same amount of shims to put it back together. Same for you guys if you're doing the Ashcroft, just keep it. You don't need to mess around measuring it or anything, just put it back together because you're going to put this assembly will be the same. Albeit you're changing that gear that has no um, that has no bearing on how the distance, if you like, between these two bearings. So. The preload setting, which has been done at the factory by these shims, will remain exactly the same. Are you with me? So that one's pinned by a big circlip. That one's pinned by that bolted on assembly there, that little casting there. So it's hard to get it apart, but these gears are in there. So what you've got to do, I'm sorry this is boring, but this is just for instruction, okay? Uh, If anyone is about to do it. If not, hopefully I will have told you to skip ahead. You need to, yeah, hit each end, right? This has a a tapered down section so you're not going to damage the thread use a copper hammer and you can beat the hell out of this and the same on this end it's quite a sturdy end use a copper copper hammer or even a hide hammer because that that is a bearing no it's not a bearing surface actually it's not an important surface only that is so it's got a chamfer on it as well so you can beat this quite hard and you're not going to 
it's not going to be at the detriment of anything. So you hit that out and you'll see this bearing will begin to move out. And you hit this end and you'll see this bearing will begin to move out. Once you've got this out enough, you're still buggered because these gears won't let you take this assembly out because these holes through the transfer case aren't big enough. Once you get it far enough out, you've then got to peel the the bearing race off. So this is actually not too tight a fit on that shaft. So you pull this off to this point and then it exposes the circlip. And that's the key to this. Get that circlip off. Then that there's a circlip, a big washer with tabs on it so it doesn't rotate. Then that gear just slides off and that selector gear just slides off. Then you can pull this end of it out of the transfer box and all this lot, gear, gear, thingamajig, circlip and bearing drop into the transfer box. So that's how you disassemble that bad boy. So I really hope this is helpful to some people. I might even do this as a separate video. Um, yeah, I might do it as a separate video just for the purposes of showing people because I, I found there was precious little information on this. Uh, how to dismantle it yourself. So Ashcroft, they do a fantastic job. Normally you send your casing off and they'll send you one back. So they've got one, you know, that you, like brake calipers, you send you send for a new one, you have to send them your old one so they can refurb your old one, you know. But they haven't got any in-house. In so I'm sending this one off and I'll wait for two weeks or whatever it is and they'll, they'll send it back. Um, yeah. So there we go. I hope that that is helpful to some people.